Now, as a Christian, we have um, we have we have options. The Christian has options. We <laughs> we have the blood of Jesus. Uh, to, all of a sudden, communion becomes uh, the medicine, and the word of God is uh, Pastor Osai. What what are you telling your members who are feeling one symptom or the other? Communion. Where, where's the role of communion in the? Uh, and this is addressing the Christian. You mean the Lord's communion? Yes. What the role is amidst this COVID-19? Yes. Well, the communion remains a doctrine in the scriptures in the midst of COVID-19 or not. Um, are you asking if maybe some people are saying it as a remedy or as some kind of uh, ritual? Uh, maybe because, uh, you know, because, you know, most of us have, we have only the Bible to, you know, to, 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 to turn to in, in times like this. You know, because in, the, in Exodus chapter 12, Talk about the blood being on the on the lintels of most houses and the region of deaths. But, um, so, what does the blood do? Is it, is it relevant in a time like this? Oh, Think. yeah. Um, I believe that you know every word of God is true. Every word of God is necessary, uh, including what the Bible teaches about communion. Like tomorrow in our church, we're having communion service. We do it every as often as we can. Uh, most times we do it uh, first Sunday of every month. You know, I don't want believers to now start being very um, uh, uh, therapeutic in a way that they are now using emblems or spreading the teachings that they don't understand and start saying things like, oh, you know, like somebody coming up with saying, oh, put garlic and turmeric and onions in a bowl of hot water and say, get the kids coronavirus and stuff <laughs> like that. Those are, so if you don't have faith in the word of god you can drink all the blood uh, and bread you can eat in your life and you know it is your belief in the word that brings about total and divine health in what jesus has done uh, now we take the communion as our exercise of faith but our faith is in the word and not the words on any or anything so i encourage believers to do it because the bible says in doing this you know, we, we have remembrance of what Jesus has done. The Bible says in Hebrews 2.14 that, you know, as much for as much as, as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he himself took part of the same. So the true death, he might destroy him that had the power of death. Hallelujah. And that is the devil. So, and the Bible also said, as often as you do this in remembrance of me, you show the Lord's death till it come. So when we take the communion, we exercise our faith in what we believe in the Lord's death. And that that death brought about the death of the activities of the devil in our lives. The Bible says, you know, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might and destroy the works of the enemy. So believers should stand on the word. Just like how my able doctor, Mokwe Adele, just, you know, explicitly explained certain things as regards to scriptures. That's, that's our foundation. It's the word. It's what we understand in scriptures. And if we don't read the Bible, if we don't exercise our faith in the Bible, listen, one of the things that the enemy is using to cripple people now is fear. And it's just making people go ahead. I, I, you know, we, we, are not, we are not supposed to be reacting to things like this. We are supposed to give a positive response mm. based on our foundation and our instruction that we have received in scriptures to handle the affairs that are happening in the world. So we, we need to keep practicing what the word says. Keep believing. So... Let us not now, some people, some people will make a business out of this now. Like there's a prof, so-called prophet in Ghana who sells bottles of, wow. sets, of certain things. Somebody can now begin to sell uh, bread and, and some wine as, as another, as, as, a, as a drug to cure coronavirus. But I, I'll speak it in the word. I know. I mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I think, I think um, thank you so much. I, I think we are, we are back to the word because uh, most churches, they have anchor shifts, they have mantle, they have all kinds of things that people now have their trust in. Uh, you know, they, everybody has it. So people even use their pastor's picture. They put their pastor's picture on their testimonies that even for the flyers, flyers for a church program, that fire came out of it and consumed the kidnappers. And, you know, there are some, all kinds of things going on in the church, but I think... Uh, we have to have the word. I'm going to call on all each of us. And believers to... help to spread this nonsense. The Christians yes. help to spread this nonsense. You know, Pastor, it's a, it's Pastor Ekanem, are you there? Thank you. Yes, I want you to just uh, speak to yes, you know, the articles. We have articles in the body of Christ. I was watching online 
uh, beginning of the year with some church program. Everybody in the church had a white handkerchief, a Pentecostal church. I, 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 I had an opportunity of meeting Archbishop Idaosa um, you know, in, in one of his prayer meetings at 5 a.m. We went to see him for something. And um, I, I, what he said, I can still remember. Pastor Bishop Idaosa said, uh, Archbishop said, uh, everything you see here is by the word of faith. He said, everything you see in Faith Miracle Center is by the word of faith. He sent for this word and his word healed them. And he spoke a word. He said, hold on to the word of God. And today we see articles as, you know, I think it's just, I don't know, it's like Babalawo type of, uh, I mean, that's we're just said. Church. You said what? As Kiru, what did you say? I said, we're, we're <laughs> I mean, our, our culture as a people is really fetish, you know, and my concern is that the younger generation, the younger people coming, our children and the younger ones coming after us, are going to really like question some of these things and if it doesn't resonate with them very many of them will find it difficult to to be christians i mean i have seen people taking a shot you say take everybody holds the anointing oil take a shot of it i, I mean i've I, mm. i've not been able to come to terms with that i'm like take a shot of what drink <laughs> it and they say when they drink it they are testimonies People vomit lions or whatever. Hubo, Hubo. Sorry, Hubo. You know, if we if we start on this trail, we're just gonna go back. Anyway, I'm, I'm we're we 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 on the word to the COVID. Yes. No, because it's our response to the COVID. Yes. You know, because people are now using articles instead of holding on to the word. I know. I'm with you, my brother. I'm with yes. you, my brother. I'm just saying, you know, just you know, these, what it should be you know, our response. doctrines and things. We, know, can't, we things, can't. We can't deal with it. I think it's time to I, I, to I, purge I, some of all that stuff, Pastor Ekanem. Yes, I, I, I think I think like uh, uh, Kiro rightly said, we are we, we, we like doctrines. We like making doctrines out of may, maybe uh, certain moves that God makes. All right, maybe at, at a certain time, maybe on a certain occasion. Uh, okay, I'm going to call on you later on, uh, Pastor. Uh, we're going to take turns to just pray, and, and uh, we're, going to, we're going to end this uh, sec segment of the call. I, I, I think we have. I'm going to put together what we have heard. Uh, response. Ikiru said some very vital things. You know, love by this shall all men know. Ye are my disciples. We need to show love to the world. We need to show our good works. Um, Pastor Adele, can you please pray? Okay. If I heard you well, you want me to pray now? Yes, sir. All right. Father, thank you for the opportunity to stand out for you in times like this. Thank you for using us as instruments of your grace and of your power. Thank you for making a difference in us and with us. We rededicate ourselves to you that in times like this, we shall stand out as your ambassadors in the name of Jesus Christ. I refuse the spirit of fear. I refuse timidity. I refuse backsliding. I reject such from everyone in this network. Instead, everyone shall be an instrument of praise, an instrument of revival, an instrument of directing people's hearts towards the coming of the Lord, an instrument towards um, uh, strengthening the church, towards the edification of the church, the manifestation of gifts, ministry, and spiritual gifts in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for our brother, who that grace continue upon him in a multiplied fashion, and you will continue to be used of them. Well, Father, we thank you for this opportunity to just spend time discussing um, your, your word concerning the issues that is at hand even in, in the world today. We thank you because we are not of them that draw back to perdition, O oh God. We are of them that believe to the saving of the souls. We thank you, Father, because we have faith in you Lord, we respond in faith to this situation. We pray for believers everywhere that they will lift up holy hands. And Lord, just to praise you and be instruments of, of good news and the gospel and faith and encouragement and, and doing good, just like the Bible says, as Jesus went about doing good, that Christians will do good. Lord, will reach out to their neighbors in this trying times, O oh God, that men will stay in the faith, O oh God, and not be, be shaken, O oh God. But at the end of the day, 
all the glory and praise will be due to you in the name of Jesus. Let our light so shine before men that they'll see our works, see our good works, and they will give you glory. Thank you for this kind of platform, oh God. May it spring up everywhere to proclaim the news of the gospel of Jesus, that men will keep knowing that there is hope in the land, and Jesus is that brings salvation to everyone, oh God. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pastor Akanem, please pray. Yes, sir. Father, we want to thank you because forever your word is settled in heaven. There's nothing that has, taken, that has happened that has taken you by surprise, and your word is our anchor. I pray, Lord, for every one of us and even for, our, for your people, for the church all over, that we will focus on you and on your word, that nothing will make us to draw back. In the name of Jesus, Lord, that your word will go forth. The Bible says that you sent forth your word and your word healed and, and, and delivered from destruction. At this hour, Lord, joining my faith with those of my brethren on this platform, we pray healing upon the land, healing upon the nations of the world in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, also that at this time that the word will prevail mightily in the lives of people, in nations, Lord, at this time, Lord, that you draw men into the kingdom, draw the hearts of men, Lord, unto you, that at the end of the day, Jesus and Jesus alone will be glorified. And so we thank you and give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In Kira, you there, please lift up your voice. Father, we thank you for our fellowship today. Thank you because you help your word to increase in our hearts and in our lives that Men will truly know that we are of you. Thank you for um, Uvo that is organizing this. I pray that you would strengthen him, equip him for the long haul. Thank you for the souls of men around us. Open our eyes to that which you will have us do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. We thank you there. Yeah. I know you, uh, you said something. I wanted you to repeat in terms of what you, you said something about... Um, uh, you, you said something about uh, for the sake of the elect, these days will be shortened. In terms of what is the rest of it, I want you to just give a little address. I'm going to put it out there. Um, so just shoot uh, when you record, uh, what will be done. Just go ahead. In terms of what is the response of the church of Jesus to this, um, um, to this uh, virus that is plaguing our world? Okay, I was referring to. Uh, a principle that Jesus Christ established when he was talking about um, the end times and particularly about uh, uh, the elect. Now, there are things, those, those times, trying times will come. Um, Rachel crying for the killing of our children will be replicated in the end times. And Jesus talked about people running to mountains, people running to um, different places for protection. And then Jesus saying that, I uh, pray that it will not be during winter and so on and so forth. So we're drawing from that principle to say that indeed period times are here. Second Timothy chapter three verse one says that clearly. So what should we do during those perilous times? For those perilous moments, ask that the elect be preserved. Let me take uh, Mark chapter 13, verse 20, for example. It says there, and except the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he had chosen, he has shortened the days. So that's to show that God is interested in preserving uh, the elect. Matthew 24, 22 says exactly the same thing. And Jesus says, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So that principle runs across. The specific mention may be related to the times of desolation of Israel, but that principle is applicable to trying and perilous times of our days. That was the point I was making uh, at that time. And it should embolden us. Thank God for what uh, Pastor, Pastor Weber said. We should be bold. We should be confident. Fear should not at all be mentioned amongst us. 
we shouldn't even be afraid of death. Who says that we have no victory over death? As where I like, to, if you if you permit me a few more seconds, as where I like to illustrate it. I grew up in Warri, where those rough boys want to be really stubborn, and you catch a boy and hold his shirt. A typical Warri boy will pull his body out of the shirt and leave his shirt in your hands. That's how we conquer death. But we, we, we are not ruled by this body. We are ruled by the spirit. And so death has no power over us. We conquer death. Amen. Our bodies don't have power over us. We are victorious over death. Amen. That's the key response. Let's be watchful. The times are drawing near. Either the time out, we will depart from this earth or the coming of the Lord. Whichever, we should be ready. For the end. Amen. 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, you know, spread it for next week or uh, next Saturday, every Saturday at, at some point. We are gonna, we are at home. Uh, for us, uh, we are at home here. Uh, our state is on lockdown for the next two months. I don't think the way things are going, but I believe, I'm believing God that by on, in a couple of days time, Passover is the eighth of April. Passover is symbolic for me. I'm, I'm just believing that as we celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Um, you know, there will be a, a you know, a, an overturning of this, of this matter. That, and, and at the end of the day, none of these scientists or governments will take the glory that Jesus will be glorified. He said, give God the glory, give God the glory, and he will give you the victory. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Thank you to have uh, a double-edged sword in this matter. In terms of you understand, you are in the forefront of treating patients, and you also have, uh, you know, a script, scriptural, I, I want to go straight to what I've heard. I heard that um, a, a vaccine is being made and people should reject the vaccine because it is the mark of the beast. And um, what, what's uh, Pastor Kubo? I don't know. We are here to discuss what the role of the church should be at times like this. Go ahead, Stanley, go ahead. But, you know, um, when we have um, uh, things like this that happen, uh, there's a whole lot of uh, misconceptions, misinformation, disinformation, even mixed up with the right information. So sometimes it's very difficult to, to navigate your way through because um, there's a lot of confusion, you know. They, they, both in the way messages are passed, messages, messages are understood, and uh, messages are delivered, you know. So, but the most important thing is, is tr most important thing really is that our reaction is really what's important. It's not really the content because many people do not react to content. They just react to their interpretation of what is being said, how it's being said, body language, and uh, what is, what is uh, the one-liners that it's, uh, that's being flashed across the screen, or what's been shared on social media. Um, it's, very it's very difficult to just say uh, what should the church be doing, like a one-liner, uh, I, I, beyond the fact that we should always live as Christians. That's the truth. Um, because many times we tend to um, make uh, it look like stuff we need to live in a particular way during a particular time. We we divorce ourselves away from reality. Our, our goal in this world is the light and as the source. And that means that we should be at the vanguard of, of, um, you know, of um, getting the right information, disseminating the right information, and understanding it in tandem with what it is right now. Rightly discerning uh, the, 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 the times, understanding the circumstances we which we live in and where we are okay i don't know where to start first but i think the first christian response is not the fear that i will be destroyed uh, or i will be affected or i'll be sick or i'll die i i, I think that is that is uh, that stems from wrong prioritization and some of that is actually because that is how the mindset of some of the christians have been over the years they have lived for have always been concerned about being alive, you know, you know, uh, staying alive in this world, doing 
doing everything that is where to make it in this world. Their goal has been etty. And so when they see anything that threatens that, their first gut reaction is fear, run, the sky is falling, and then and, and, and they try everything else. But if a Christian understands that, no matter what, pandemic or not, in fact, this pandemic probably is not going to kill as many persons as the normal diseases that are killing people every day are cancers, accidents, uh, violence, a lot of violence all over the world, um, um, uh, non-communicable diseases. Christians are still falling prey. So, uh, the, so this pandemic is really, is really bringing out what's in the inside of us, really. And I think if we, if we calm down and we relax and listen to the Holy Spirit inside us, we will realize that that gut feeling, that running out to say, it will not affect me, it will not affect me, is a very wrong way to go. Because it, it makes us run away from who we are, really. We as Christians are supposed to look at it and say, how do I change the narrative? How do I, how do I stand in the gap? How do I... How do I be, become a solution? But many Christians just run into their houses, close their doors, and say it's not happened to me. And I and I think that reaction is what is propelling the fear. Uh, now, as for conspiracy theories, they will not end. They will continue to propagate in this world. They will not end. And um, and and the today's world where social media is so such a big deal. And um, when there's interconnectivity and news can spread and become viral, viral, virus, <laughs> viral, it can become very viral quickly. Yeah, it becomes a fertile ground for a lot of things to, to come up, you know. And people just, most people are, are not, they, they do not know, even though the information is out there, they do not digest the information. They're just looking for somebody to interpret it, to digest it out for them and bring a one-liner or one thing so that they would say, this is it. Uh, I, I, I don't know, but I, I, I think that if it comes to the Antichrist, the Antichrist is beyond just a chip. It's beyond just uh, control. It is a system of this world that is against Christ. It is a system. The, um, Paul and uh, especially um, Apostle John in the epistles and then even in the Revelation shows us that it is beyond an event or just a mark. It's a system. I would say the, the Antichrist, the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work. Otherwise, we would see BVN uh, that we have in Nigeria, social security numbers, and every other means by which this world is getting interconnected as the mark of the beast. You know, I, I don't know. I don't think just to have a tattoo or just to have a chip is suffices enough. It, otherwise, we've already been controlled. Quite a number of things we, we cannot do to be into this world without being in the system. You don't have social security number, you're not registered, you don't have a passport, you don't have a number. You, you know, a lot of things are already done and Christians are already in that system. So it's not just being in the system that is the problem or the challenge or the mark of the beast itself. It is the system that becomes anti -God. And 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 if we are going to raise, to raise an alarm, we should not raise an alarm about the methods. Mm -mm. We should raise an alarm about how society is becoming harder for Christians to live in. You, mm. you, I, I remember, I remember uh, the debates around, I think about three, four years ago in the US and some other uh, places, Christians were being forced to bake cakes for homosexual marriages. Uh, and, and many people felt, well, it doesn't concern me. Uh, and the, the, uh, it became, um, in some places, it, uh, against the law to even preach the gospel, you know. And we are talking about democracies. And, and then some people say, well, we just keep quiet. Uh, but, 
those are the is the system itself is the mm. system itself when it begins to work when it is proclaimed that is the antichrist the antichrist mm. is not number the antichrist is not a chip mm. it's, it's what the chip will be used for and when mm. it will be in and, and i think we're making an error when we try to to secret secret it to just that event and, and then we take the mind of the believers away from how how everything is mm. changed and slowly changing around us hmm. Hmm. this is it, powerful gospel you just preached yeah you you, you know sometimes Sometimes the, the problem with uh, the Christians. Pastor Mokwa, that... are you there? Hold on, Sally. Hold on. Pastor Mokwa, are you there? Yes. I, 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 did you hear what Sally just said? Uh, yes, I was. I'm just asking, what time is it in terms of for us as, as believers? You know, because I, people are looking at times and timelines of events. What do you think? We okay, with respect to about? the end times. Yes. No, no, I'm very careful about um, the calendar approach. What is important is that as we speak, we are closer to the coming of the Lord than the beginning of this program or than the beginning <laughs> of the sentence I just made. So as time goes on, we get closer and closer. You will notice that the Lord did not specify any calendar, any calendar arrangement. However, we should keep in mind here that virtually all signs have been in one way or the other fulfilled concerning the coming of Jesus. Mm. But Jesus never told us that immediately a certain sign appears that means he will just come. No. What is important is that we are closer now than before. And I think uh, Brother Stanley mentioned something, that it is not so much about material discernment. I would rather put it this way uh, in line with what he has said to you. It's about how our, well, about our functional capacity as believers, how they affect us. Whenever something happens, what we must take hold of is our faith. So as for what time it is, the timing is the nearness of the coming of the Lord. That is the right time. All right.